in the last lecture we had talked about quantum teleportation uh, the basic principle behind teleportation was as follows uh, we assume that we have uh, two people uh, called alice and bob as i told you earlier that quantum computing uh, has these characters as its standard bearers alice has with her a quantum state uh, which uh, is alpha 0 plus beta 1 with alpha and beta complex in general which she wants to send to Bob uh, with whom she also shares uh, a uh, an entangled pair which we took to be uh, the Bell state. Then we found that uh, because of the restrictions imposed by quantum no cloning theorem uh, such a transportation of a quantum state from one place to another is not possible and uh, uh, this can be done uh, in a different way that is uh, uh, if Bob has enough information about this state he could reconstruct such a state at his point. So what Alice does is to make her part of the entangled uh, qubit interact with this unknown state alpha 0 plus beta 1 and does certain operations and based on her measurement the Bob takes certain actions which we have discussed in our last lecture which enables Bob to reconstitute that state at his end. There are two questions which we answered towards the end. One is that since we never talked about uh, the how far these two uh, people Alice and Bob are located, uh, is this in principle a faster than light communication uh, which we know uh, violates the dictates of special theory of relativity. The uh, point is that uh, irrespective of what the status there is, Alice has to still communicate the result of her me uh, measurement to Bob by a classical channel. So therefore the information transfer if any has to take place following the dictates of relativity. So there is no faster than light communication in this case. The second point was since Bob has a copy of the same um, state which Alice wanted to send her, send him, um, is this a cloning which we know is not permitted? The answer again is no because if you look at Alice's end, what has happened to the state that she has, has now collapsed to either a state 0 or a state 1 and what Bob has done is to reconstitute alpha 0 plus beta 1 state in place of the state that he had okay, using the information that Alice has given. So there has not been any cloning. So that was uh, quantum teleportation which we will see has its um, uh, role to play in when we talk about quantum cryptography at a much later part of this course. Now what we are going to do today is to look at a in some sense something which is inverse of this process but uh, uh, slightly different which is known as uh, dense coding also known as super dense coding depending upon what language you want to use. So let us look at what does this dense coding imply first then we will work out how does it work. See the idea of dense coding is the Alice wants to send in this case. Uh, two bits of classical information. So therefore Alice wants to say let us say 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 or 1, 1. Now Alice is to do that using a quantum state to send this information. Remember that in the quantum teleportation she had sent classical information through a classical channel and a quantum state was prepared. Now the purpose is essentially to send a quantum bit to Bob and enable Bob to have classical information. The difference also is that uh, she will be sending one bit of quantum information and Bob should be able to extract two bits of classical information and hence the name code, uh, coding or dense coding. So let us look at how does it actually work. So once again, once again we use a 
an entangled state to achieve this. So, we will take uh, the starting point to be one of the Bell states and the one qubit is with Alice and the second qubit is with Bob. Now, in this process what Alice will do will be to uh, have certain operations on her part of the qubit. They having done that she will send this qubit the modified qubit if you like to Bob through a quantum channel and Bob on receiving this qubit see he has now this modified bit from Alice and the original part of the qubit that uh, he had said uh, as a part of the bell pair. Now, he will do certain uh, measurements on his qubit and based on that he will be able to infer what classical two bits of information that Alice wanted to send her and let us see how it works. So, this is a schematics of the type of circuit that we have. Uh, the left hand part of the circuit which is uh, enclosed in that uh, uh, red dotted rectangle is really uh, uh, not a part of our prop, uh, process because that is simply telling you uh, the how a bell state is generated actually. So, uh, you start with uh, the two states 0 0 uh, and then you apply a Hadamard followed by a C naught. So, that is the way to generate uh, the bell state. So, therefore, the left hand side part is simply a bell state generation. Now, what happens is this that once Alice and Bob have got their bits entangled. So, I have assumed that we have taken the state 0 0 plus 1 1. So, this is the entangled state that Alice and Bob share. Now, uh, the idea of the coding is this, Alice wants to send 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 or 1 1 to Bob. Now, based on what she wants to send, she will be doing some unitary operation on this bell state. Now, remember she can only modify the states uh, the qubit which is with her, her part of the qubit, she cannot do anything to the other qubit. Now, in this particular case that what Alice will do if she wants to send 0 0, she will actually do nothing. Now, so let us return back to uh, this state again. So, we have the picture again. So, this this stands for the unitary operation which Alice will perform uh, the depending upon what C wants to achieve. So, at this moment I have said that if C is interested in sending the state 0 0, C will do nothing. Now, suppose C wants to uh, have 0 1 then what she will do will be to uh, perform. Now, let me write it down x cross i meaning thereby on her qubit x is applied on Bob's qubit nothing is applied because she cannot apply anything on Bob's qubit. So, let us see what will this give me. So, if she does that, so therefore, uh, uh, this results in whatever state we had 0 0 plus 1 1 by root 2 and this will result in remember what x does is to interchange x uh, 0 and 1. So, therefore, it will give me 1 0 plus 0 1 by root 2. Now, suppose she wants to send 1 0 there what she will do will be to send a use an operation y get i y of course, cross i, uh, but uh, uh, note the following that the matrix sigma y is 0 minus i i 0. So, therefore, if I write down i times sigma, sigma y, 
So, that gives me 0 1 minus 1 0. So, as a result i times sigma y acting on the state 0, uh, it gives me well I operate this on 1 0. So, this is 0 minus 1 which is equal to minus of state 1 and i times sigma y I will return back to this list. So, i times sigma y acting on state 0 gives you minus 1 and i times sigma y acting on state 1 is 0 1 minus 1 0 acting on 0 1 which is equal to uh, 1 0 which is nothing but 0. So, what we said is that if c wants to send state 1 0, c will apply i y cross i on that state. So, that was, uh, so what it will do is I had a 0 0, 0 becomes minus 1, so it is minus 1 0 and 1 becomes uh, 0, so I get 0 1 by root 2. So, that is uh, uh, there and if c wants to send 1 1 then what c will do is to apply z cross i. So, z cross i will give you uh, um, ok remember that what z does is to uh, change the sign of 1. So, therefore, uh, on her qubit I get a 0 0 minus 1 1 by root 2. So, that is the next slide gives you the full picture uh, of uh, what happens. I think the third one needs a minus sign change, but that as we know overall sign it is inaccurate. So, this is exactly what happens when Alice does uh, something to her qubit. Okay. Having done that, so you notice what we have got basically are the four Bell states uh, which are generated depending on what classical information Alice wants to send to Bob. So, now that Bob has received that, let us once again look at our um, uh, the um, diagram. So, uh, now the next part you look at the right hand side there is a uh, red rectangle which tells you that these are the measurements that Bob is doing. Now, what does Bob have? Bob, Bob has the four different uh, bell states. Uh, and these have been generated by Alice by doing something to her qubit alone depending upon what information C wants Bob to have. Now, what Bob does now is to use a C naught operator first. Now, let us look at how does that work. So, what we have said is using the Alice's bit as the control and uh, uh, Bob uses a C naught. So, let us look at what is the effect of C naught, Bob's C naught. So, when Bob uh, applies the C naught, what will happen is let us look at again what Bob has received. So, Alice wants to send 0 0. So, we have got 0 0 plus 1 1 by root 2. When Bob applies C naught because it depends upon what is Alice's bit here. So, it will be 0 0 and plus 
वन जीरो बाय रूट टू सो दिस इज व्हाट बॉब हैज गॉट आफ्टर ही हैज अप्लाइड ए सी नॉट ऑपरेशन व्हेन एलिस वांटेड टू सेंड जीरो वन वी हैड सीन अर्लियर दैट व्हाट बॉब रिसीव्ड इज एक्चुअली वन जीरो प्लस जीरो वन बाय रूट टू And if you apply a C naught, what you get is because this is one, so I get one one plus zero one by root two. If we wanted to send one zero, what we got is uh, minus one zero plus zero one by root two, which gives me minus one one. Plus zero one by root two, and finally, if we wanted to send one one, we Bob received zero zero minus one one by root two, and which then would become zero zero plus uh, minus one zero by root two. This is the application of C not gauge result gauge. Now notice very interesting thing that after Bob C not operation, using the first qubit as the control and the second qubit as the target, you notice the second qubit is in this case as well as in this case happens to be zero, and in these two cases it happens to be one. So let me make a note here: the second qubit. Is zero here? Second qubit is zero here. In these cases, it is equal to one. So at that stage, what Bob does is to measure the second qubit. Now, when Bob measures the second qubit, Bob will get either a zero or a one with equal probability. Now, if Bob got look at this picture again. This is the same thing which is there on the slide also. The if you look at that picture of what happens when uh, Bob applied a C naught. So if second qubit is measured and it is zero. So if the second qubit is zero, Alice must have sent. Either zero zero or one one is important, and if the second qubit is one, Alice must have sent either zero one or one. So this is the intimation that we get from measurement of second qubit. Now second qubit has collapsed. But the first qubit is still in a linear combination of states corresponding to the situation where the second qubit is zero in the first case, or second qubit is one in the second case. So let us look at what that happens here. Now let me return, come back here again to uh, this table. Look at when the second qubit is zero. The first qubit in the first case is zero plus one by root two. In this case, it is zero minus one by root two. So therefore, whether the case is this or the case is this, there is a difference in the first qubit because this is zero zero plus one by root two and this is zero minus one by root two. And likewise, if the second qubit is one. The when the second qubit is one, the first qubit in this case is zero plus one by root two. This is zero minus one by root two. So, so uh, the first qubit is different in the two cases. Now, what Bob does now? Bob applies now a Hadamard gauge.
So, look at the result of the Hadamard gate from the slide. So, in this particular case, when I had uh, the after the C naught, so this is uh, the written as a factor. So, the if this is 0, it is 0 plus 1 by root 2, if it is uh, or it is 0 minus 1 by root 2. So, if you applied Hadamard on the first unit, you will get this to be 0 and this to become 1. So, notice that what Bob will now do will be to make a measurement of the first qubit. Now, when Bob makes a measurement of the first qubit, okay, if the first qubit is 0, okay, then look at look at the situation back from the table again. So, look at the situation in the first qubit. So, the first qubit becomes 0 on application of Hadamard here. First qubit becomes 0 on application of Hadamard here. So, therefore, if first qubit is 0, Bob will confirm infer that Alice must have sent either 0, 0 or 0, 1. But then he had a second qubit measurement, Alice must have sent either 0, 0 or 1, 1. So, therefore, a combination of the measurement of the first and the second qubit will enable Bob to infer what exactly was the state sent because this is the complete logic. So, if the second qubit is 0, first qubit is 1, then it is a an intersection of 0, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 1. So, obviously, the qubits the bit sent must have been 0, 0. So, this is the idea of super dense coding. Now, I would like to point out that though we have used Bell state as an illustration, the super dense coding is not necessarily restricted to Bell state. Where does super dense coding work? The super dense coding work because of the following things. That suppose I have a basis set of normalized states S which contains let us say 2 to the power n basis states uh, which I have called as S0, S1 to S2 to the power n minus 1. Now, suppose there exists a unitary operation which is such that that if I apply that there is a unitary operation corresponding to every qubit such that uh, the u j of i acting on s i is equal to s j. Remember, this is just a formal way of stating what we did with the Bell state. What we did with the Bell state is to say that suppose I wanted to send 0 0, I start with the Bell state. Now, if I do wanted to say send 0 1, but I am allowed to do an operation only on the first qubit. So, therefore, I do certain operations on the first qubit to convert that state into another state which belongs to that set, namely in that case the set of the four Bell states. So, by doing a unitary operation on the first qubit, I converted the Bell state into one of the four Bell states. Now, if this is the situation in general, then my dense coding or super dense coding as it is sometimes called will work. Just to give you an example, you can check the following. I will just tell you how it actually works and then you can do this exercise at home. So, uh, I will take what is known as the g h z state which is a 3 qubit state which is 0 0 0 plus 1 1 1. Now, in this case what Alice will try to do will be Alice has 2 qubits and Bob has the last qubit. Now, what Alice will try to do is to send 2 qubits of quantum information to Bob hoping that the Bob will be able to get 
one of the eight possibilities namely 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 etc. The next page has the complete list and then Bob by making a suitable measurement which you can try to work out will be able to guess what is the uh, three qubit three bits of classical information that Alice wanted to send him. So, for instance we start with GHZ state supposing Alice wanted to send look at the last element 0 1 0. So, Alice does an x cross i remember Alice cannot touch Bob's bit. So, what does x do? So, x as we know interchanges ok and x will interchange 1 and 0. So, therefore, the, this is what Alice wants to do and this is what she will get and then she will send the whole thing to Bob. Bob will do certain operations which I am not telling you here and based on which Bob will be able to conclude uh, what bits Alice wanted to send him, what classical bits Alice wanted him to have. So, the idea of uh, super dense coding was that by sending a smaller number of quantum bits, Alice is able to communicate to Bob a uh, larger number of classical bits of information. The point to notice that they must share an entangled uh, state beforehand and Alice should be able to perform certain operations only on her qubit leaving Bob's bits untouched. Having completed it she would send them by a quantum channel to Bob. Bob will perform certain operations use a use certain logics based on the result of the measurements he will have on these qubits that he has after Alice has sent them and he will be able to conclude what classical bits Alice wanted him to have. 